In today's video, we wanna talk about how we took our relationship from surviving, like literally just barely surviving and almost getting a divorce, to thriving, where yeah. it is now. Yeah, we wanna talk about that journey and let us know if you're surviving in your relationship yeah. right now. And if you are, we just want you to know you're not alone. Mm. A lot of people are surviving in their relationship right now. There's a yeah. lot of stuff happening in the world. A lot of external pressures and stress, you know, yeah. when you combine things like COVID and then all of the other effects of that, mm. you know, it's been going on for a long time now. You know, yeah. we're talking about a couple of years. Mm. Um, there's been a lot of pressure, people losing their jobs, you know, prices going up, all of these things adding on top of each other and stacking on the the already challenging things in your relationship, yep. it's made things, it's almost like a pressure cooker. It is. People yep. have been under so much pressure yep. and we're seeing more and more couples really struggling. Yeah. And, and so we wanted to share a little bit about our journey. How we did And that. how we how dealt we with it, how we got out. through that challenging time. Yeah, and you know, we're gonna share a story because we have been where you've been. That's mm. why we're doing this work. Our mess in our relationship yep. became our message. So. We mean that from our hearts that yeah. you're not alone and if you are in survival right now, you're not failing and I know you feel like you're failing when you're in survival and that's how we felt. Yeah. We've been there multiple times in our relationship um, and I know a lot of couples are there right now. So I just want you to know you're not alone, you're not failing, you're not broken, you're not being punished. They're all the things we thought. Yeah. There are a lot of the things that our clients we're working with are saying that they feel like they're failing, they're being punished, they're not good enough, and it's not true. Mm -hmm. um, we have all been in survival before, and you will you will be there again. It, it's part of growth, and no one shared this with us. That's no. why we're sharing it with you, yeah. because we thought we were going backwards when we were actually on this path moving forward, but we didn't realize that survival was gonna be part of that journey. So. When things get really hard on the outside, that's what we do. We go into survival. Mm. That's that's a way that we cope. Um, and in our relationship, it's the same thing. So we don't have time to share the whole process, but we're gonna share one or two things that really mm. helped us shift from <clears throat> that survival to thriving. So one um, story that feels like most on my heart at the moment to share is when we had our first child. So. It was a similar situation to what's happening in the world right now. Um, we had our first child in 2017, our mm. son, Abin. Um, we were living in a traditional house, had all the bills and all of that. And Adam, like most men, <laughs> was craving freedom and mm. time and to be able to make his own decisions and be in control of his life. Yeah. So he and he wasn't passionate about the work he was doing. Yeah, he, like I was really just looking for a, a change and I wanted to to get back to nature and really escape the rat race that I felt like I'd created for myself. And mm. and it was a, I had this vision of, of building this tiny house. Um, for those of you that don't know what a tiny house is, it's essentially a, a small house on a, on a trailer, yeah. like a caravan. Like a caravan, yeah. Um, but it's or a trailer a home if you're in, in yeah. the United States. We should try and put a picture of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but essentially that was my dream. And my dream was to build this house and then take, take my family, which at that time was just Aston, our son was obviously still, you know, growing. Yeah. In we Aston's didn't know tummy. at the time, but three months before we finished this tiny house, I remember saying to Adam, okay, this tiny house dream is your dream, it's not mine. Mm. You can do this, build this tiny house, but make sure you do it before we have kids because there is no way I'm really, I can see myself being able to raise kids in a tiny house. Yeah. Well, luckily we don't all have a glass um, glass globe that shows us, you know, a magic globe that shows us what's going to happen because that's exactly what happened. Three months before we moved in, I found out I was pregnant with mm. our son, Abin, and it was the most exciting, beautiful, incredible time, but also sent me into survival. I yeah. was like, how am I actually going to be able to do this? Mm. I'm pregnant for the first mm. time, becoming a mum for the first time, we're moving into a tiny house, so... And what that actually means is it was completely off grid. We had a dam as our water supply. Yeah. We had a composting toilet. Like this is stuff I'd never done before. I didn't. And, it, learn... and it also, it wasn't our property. We were we were yeah. we'd arranged with someone to rent some of their land off them. Yeah. So we were we were staying on borrowed land. Mm. We didn't have full control over the land and what we did with it. So we were, <laughs> you know, we felt like, you know, invaders in this person's property and. Mm. And then you, like Aston said, you add in all the other elements of a, an off-grid living arrangement. Yeah, I had to learn how to and use a generator. Like seriously, I was in, where, like 
way over my head. Mm. Like I had no idea what I was doing. Adam really had no idea what he was yeah, doing. Yeah, I was either. learning as I went as well. Um, and it put us both into survival mode yeah. because we were just so fearful of can we do this is it going to work like mm. you know we hadn't even planned to have a room in the tiny house for our baby we had a loft because it was just designed for us um and three months out we didn't have time to completely change the whole layout yeah. so um you know we had to just work with it and this is what so many of us are doing right now mm. with the state of the world you're working with what you've got and it's learning how to do that in a way that that will help you and that's what helps you move out of survival so we made a decision that we were going to work with what we had mm. and that's what helped us be able to move forward we didn't like half go in half go out we mm. were like no this is what we're doing we're deciding to make this work and this is what we're going to do and even after we made that decision it didn't just turn out to be this beautiful rainbow like no. easy ride yeah. and I tell you that because often this is what happens when we decide we want more it's like training in the gym when you decide that you want more muscles you go to the gym and the training gets harder because you've decided you want more so you've got to go through the training and this is what we were doing it was training for our relationship mm. I literally remember telling myself if we can get through this as a couple living in a tiny house what it was like 7.2 meters by 2.2 yeah. meters mm. tiniest space there was nowhere to run when we were having a tough conversation when when there was an argument brewing when someone was annoyed at someone there was nowhere to go you could go outside mm. but it's not like you had like a beautiful place to sit or anything yeah. Um, so we had to, there was no doors to slam in each other's faces. We had to endure it. We had to decide, yeah. I don't like you right now, or I don't like this thing right now, but instead of running, I'm going to stay. Yeah. Instead of running, I'm going to lean in. Mm. And we, ha this was the gift that we can now appreciate yeah. looking back. But in the time, I'm telling you, it did not feel like a gift. No. We were, with all the pressure of everything, oh, we were constantly horrendous. arguing. We were never on the same page. Mm. Um, I felt like a complete failure, even though I'd just built a home. You know, what I was telling myself at the time was I'd just built this amazing home for my family. And um, and I thought it was my dream. Mm. So I felt like I should feel successful, mm. but I didn't feel successful yeah. because we were constantly arguing and having these troubles in our relationship. And it didn't remove any of the stress. It didn't remove so the stress, yeah, which was my intention. We moved from a beginning. house, paying bills and everything, to a tiny house yeah. because Adam was like, we'll have less bills, no debt, yeah. all those things. We paid off all our debt. We had no, um, hardly any bills, mm. but he also then wasn't working. Yeah. Like he went that much into survival that it was then like, oh, I'm just gonna build a business and I'm not even gonna work or, mm. you know, and I've just had this baby and I'm thinking, Okay, yeah. the, like my maternal insto instincts were going off and mm. this is what happens when a woman has a baby, something like a switch goes off and there's all of a sudden, I, it's not that I just have to look after me and protect me, I've got to look after this baby and protect this baby. That switch does not go off in men. Yeah. Some men are able to switch it themselves, Adam did not. Mm. Like I would, like I, I say to my clients like, and I'm sharing with you that that is not how I imagined my experience of my initiation of becoming a mum. Mm. No way. I didn't think I had ideas. I didn't think I had plans or expectations of how it would look, but I realized once it happened and it was nothing <laughs> like what I thought it would be, that I did have mm. some, some ideas. And you will be having ideas as well. And some of those ideas are, um, are why we're coming up with challenges in our relationship. Mm. Adam thought that experience was gonna be this amazing, elaborate, incredible experience. He pumped it up to be better than it ever could be. And in reality, it, it was not what he thought it was going to mm. be. Yep. And it was the same for me with motherhood. I thought it would be this amazing thing. And really, I was not met in the way that I wanted to be met. You know, Adam became really s more stressed than he'd ever become in his life, yep. living in that tiny house with hardly any bills and no debt. It's mm. crazy because we're all yep. told if you don't have any debt, if your bills are all paid, then you'll be happy. Yeah. If you've got somewhere to live and that's all done, you will be happy and your mm. family will be happy. But it's not true yeah. because it's in you. The stuff we need to work through is in us. So whether you live in a house, a mansion, a tiny house, yeah. you take you and all that shit with you. <laughs> and that's what we did. Yeah. And 
in that tiny space, we had to face off with it all. You know, yeah. I remember sitting on the composting toilet because that was the only room that had a door, was the toilet, bathroom, shower, baby change area. Yeah. And sitting on the toilet some nights and just crying, just crying, just feeling that weight of survival. And I, I remember that feeling now and mm. of just feeling like, how did I get here? How did I get to this place in my relationship where we're not on the same page, where we're not listening to each other, mm. we don't understand what we need, we don't know how to give each other what we need, how did we get here? Yeah. You know, we fell in love in high school, we were high school sweethearts, you know, how did we go from high school sweethearts to surviving mm. and, and looking at each other and not even understanding each other, not yeah. being on the same page? Like, how did we get here? And yeah. so if you are feeling that, I just want you to know we really have been there. Yeah. Like, hand on heart, we have been there. And, yeah. you know, I'm being vulnerable and sharing that with you because I think that's what we need right now. We need yeah. people sharing truly, really what they went through and how they got through to the other side. So how we did that, you know, mm. like I said, the first step was deciding yeah. and then fully leaning in. Like I had that moment, I cried, I felt what I needed to feel, feel, but I got back up and I was like, Adam, if this is what we're doing, then let's really do it. Yeah. Let's really lean in. Let's learn how to actually communicate in a way that we understand each other. Mm. Let's get on the same page. Let's get in alignment so we're both going in the same direction. Um, and just to be clear on that too, like I know with a lot of couples, because we work with a lot of couples, sometimes it's one partner who makes the decision first. Yeah, and that was It's me. not always a magic scenario where you both come together mm. and go, okay, we're going to do this. I think and that together. rarely happens. Yeah, very rarely. Yeah. So Aston was actually the first one who made the decision within herself that she was gonna become the kind of person who was deserving of a next level relationship, who was deserving of more love, more communication, more connection, more happiness than what we were experiencing at that time in the and 20s. And in that particular situation, I needed to decide that I wanted a different, I wanted to create a different version of our relationship. Yeah. So once we decided that, and I knew that Adam felt the same, but he had a lot of shame and like, yeah. um, you know, he felt like because it was his dream, he had to stay and yeah. stick it out. And so we had to work through a lot of that. And you'll be happening to work through that in different ways as well, because you're you're on different points of the path. Mm. You know, you're on you're in the same relationship, but you're at different points, yeah. guaranteed. Mm. And that's part of the problem. So you've got to learn how to get to the same point yeah. and, and learn how to understand the points that each other are at and yeah. how to work with that. You know, we were not at the same point, but we were able to get to the same point by me getting clearer about where I wanted to go and yeah. what I wanted in our relationship. And part of that meant knowing what I really didn't want. Yeah. After that tiny house experience, the, the best thing that came out of that is we knew clearly what we definitely did not want. Yeah. And this is what you might be shown right now. In your survival mode, where your relationship is right now, you are probably being shown what you really like do not want yeah. like you didn't realize it was a major hell no but you now know yeah. after going through that this is a hell no for me and so that is what that experience showed me that there were some definite hell no's out of that experience that we no longer allow into our relationship or into our life and um we had to go through that experience to learn it mm. so you know think about what that in your experience right now what what are those no's that you know now that you definitely don't want because once you know what you don't want you can start to move towards what you do want yeah. you can start to get clearer yeah. and that's what we did once we decided we then made a decision that we needed to learn a new way yeah. we didn't want to do the tiny house way that wasn't the yeah. right way for us we didn't want to do the way of just living in a traditional house and just getting in the rat race mm. and doing what everyone else had done neither of those ways had worked for us our relationship and our family so mm. we needed to create a new way we needed to find a new way so that meant like opening our minds and and our hearts to learning from people who had the relationships we want yeah. who were genuinely happy also real not perfect um, that we could relate to, that we could learn from. And that meant reading books, doing courses, do, doing programs. Getting um, coaches. Getting coaches. We still do that because yeah. we're still students on this journey as well as teachers. So we, we went on that journey and we went all in. And initially, like Adam said, it was me that went all in. Yeah. But Adam realized he needed to meet me on that journey. Otherwise, saw, he was going to lose me. Yeah, I saw Aston changing. I, I, she, she started putting in the work and taking responsibility for herself. And stopped really trying to 
tell me what I needed to do. She just took respons responsibility for herself, started doing the work, and I could see her growth. I could see her changing. She was becoming a different person. And therefore, I felt like I needed to, to start doing some work in order to stay in the relationship with her because she was being, um, was to put it simply, be, yeah. being a better wife. It just yeah. felt like I was more appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, she was doing more around the home. She was being more loving, more caring, more, uh, more open. And it just had this effect on me like, geez, I need to raise my standards or mm -hmm. she's going to leave. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I started to do the work on myself. Yeah. And that was a real turning point for us. Yeah, so really, the, in a nutshell, it's really deciding and taking responsibility for what you're going to do. Mm. How are you going to become the kind of person who deserves the relationship you want? Yeah. Um, and that, like Aston said, that could be reading books, courses, yeah. coaches. Then do the work. Yeah, just like, do the work. Do the work to get that. And, yeah. and start to get clear on what you do want. Like, yeah. That's how we started to thrive. We started to move and bring our attention to where we wanted to go. I stopped looking back. Mm. I stopped continually, continually bringing up, you know, that Adam did that to me. You yeah. know, in the beginning, I was like, it's your fault that we live in this house. Like, I never wanted to do it. It was your dream. Like, you've probably done yep. this too. I was blaming him. I was shaming him. I was basically mm. saying that he was the one holding me back and that I couldn't have what I wanted all because of him. And yes, there is some truth in the decisions he was making and the mistakes he was making, they were definitely impacting me. Mm. But they were not literally holding me back. If I believed they were limiting beliefs, then I get to keep them. And that's what happened in the beginning. That's mm. why we were surviving, because I kept believing these limiting beliefs that this is what I deserve. This is all that it's going to be. Mm. And there's nothing I can do about it. And I'm helpless. And, you know, no one, you know, I've got no family around me. I was living three hours away from family. I had no family around me. We had one car. Um, I had to, you know, get, wake the baby up and drive Adam to work mm. at the early hours of the morning. Then put the baby back in the car, take the baby back home, feed the baby, put, put the baby to sleep. It was, you know, I had to get real, real with myself that I was choosing that. Mm. I can't just blame him for his decisions. I was choosing that. And um, definitely it hurt, definitely it was painful and I needed to feel all of that. But then I needed to decide to stop looking back because otherwise I was gonna keep creating our past in our future. And this is why people get stuck in a pattern of surviving in their relationship. They keep looking back yeah. and bringing the back bringing that past into the present mm. moment you you bring it constantly bringing it with you yeah. i had to start dumping it i had to start letting it go like that was that part of our life i'm letting it go i'm learning the lessons and i'm moving on and that's all failure is and that's what we decided that okay in some ways that was a massive failure mm. but in other ways it was the biggest learning we've ever been on in our life yeah. and we can say that we built a tiny house on wheels yeah. not not everybody can say that um, and in that experience, there were some beautiful moments, yeah. you know, we were able to come back to each other and what really matters, mm. you know, after we were able to learn how to work through our stuff and communicate and get on the same page, we were able to see that what really matters is not where we live, yeah. not what we have. It's that we have got each other's backs mm. no matter what. Yeah. Like I loved him when he had nothing. I love him when he has everything. I'll, I'll love him when he makes a mistake and it's the same for me mm. and that's what we all really want in our relationship we want to know that we've got at least one person that is with us till the end that yeah. is with us regardless of of you know of what's going on or, or yeah. whether we're successful or not um and that is going to love us even for our mistakes you know mm. they're not going to keep shaming us and blaming us for the rest of our lives like yeah. that is not unconditional love so that is then how we were able to move to this place of thriving and yeah. thriving like i could go on and on about what that looks like but it's going to look different for everybody <clears throat> but for us that thriving is we are growing together we are yeah. growing in the same direction we have like, a common common vision for yeah, our relationship and our life we spend we spend more time together now we have than regular we dates have. than we ever have we yeah. have a day every week and we spend time together every day to have and it's not coffee. because we have to or no. should we no. genuinely want to. It's a priority for you know, us. You yeah. know, I genu genuinely want to talk to Adam. I genuinely want to know what's going on for him mm. or like dream with him. And when we were in survival, I didn't even want to know. I just mm. didn't want him to talk. I was just yeah. like, the energy was horrible. I was like, just stay away from me. Get out of my way. Like, yeah. um, you know, it just seemed easier to be separated yeah. when we were in that place of survival. And yeah. the truth is it's not easier. 
It's, it's not. Like we said, your survival energy goes with you. Yeah. You might not be with that person, but your patterns or the stuff that went on, you take that with you. So you still have to do the work to heal it anyway. Yeah. So we yep. basically thought, well, let's heal it together. Mm. If we've got to heal this, you know, go through this healing process, let's do it together. Yeah. Why do it on our own? When we're going to be doing it, whether, you know, if we are not together, we're going to be doing it anyway. Yeah. Let's do it together. Yeah. Um, and that's what we did. And, and now we're at this place of thriving. And it just, honestly, I yearned, I craved, I wished, I prayed to feel like I could reach Adam yeah. on that deeper level. I wanted to be connected to his heart. I mm. wanted to feel, you know, even after 18 years of being together, um, well, at this point it was like 16 years, mm. I still didn't feel like I fully knew Adam or that he'd fully let me in. Yeah. And that was partly to do with the way I was coming to the relationship and also how Adam needed to learn how to open. Um, but I hear this from women all the time, that, that they feel shut out. Yeah. And I deeply wanted to feel connected to Adam. You know, I wanted to feel like we were all in this together. And we're there. We, we, you know, we're not perfect, no way. Mm. We still make mistakes, but we're going through it together now. Yeah. And, and we both feel supported in that. We both feel understood. I mean, I don't know how you could thrive any more than that in a relationship. Yeah. Feeling understood, appreciated, loved. Like you can go through challenges like what's happening in the world right now knowing that you're walking through it together. Mm. You know, when stress comes up now, we don't take it out on each other. We work through it together. Yeah. Whereas a lot of people in survival right now, they're blaming their partner. They're saying, you should be doing more. You're not doing enough. This is your fault. Da, da, da. Yeah. All this fear, all this survival energy just feeds more survival energy. Which is just creating more and more separation yeah, over time. Yeah, between, between you Which is the partner. opposite of what you both really yeah. want. So yeah. really the key, the key piece in this was learning how to communicate mm our needs yep. taking responsibility and then communicating our needs yeah. and, and we had that. to we, you know, had, we to had to learn, learn a new we way to communicate because at, at that time like Aston was saying we were actually just blaming each other mm. for everything we weren't taking responsibility and we, we weren't understanding how to effectively communicate what we really needed yeah um and that, that's something that we now teach we learn a new way to communicate mm. And, and, it's, and it's so, much it's so life think. changing. Now we just think, God, we're so stupid. Like, how did we, how did yeah. we know this? It's so simple. Yeah. Um, but if we don't get taught this stuff, no. you know, we don't have a less like a class at school on relationships, you know. Mm. And it's crazy because why this is so important is if I asked you if you lost, um, you know, you lost everything in your life, obviously you'd be upset. But if you lost your partner, how would you feel? You know, who is the most important? person to you in your life who do you who do you want to spend more time with it's most likely your partner you know if you get all the stuff out the way all the you know all the issues out the way mm. if, we, if we helped you solve all those issues because they're solvable mm. you would want to spend the most time with them so wouldn't you regret getting to the end of your life realizing that if i just actually invested in my relationship if i'd actually worked on my relationship it could have actually worked mm. I could have had that amazing relationship. And then what impact would that have had on your life? And that's what kept us going. You know, mm. relationships require endurance. After the first three years, they require some endurance if you're gonna to stay together. And that's what that's what this time was for us. Yeah. It was endurance. And this is what it, you're going through now. And you will feel like you're failing, but you're so close to getting to that next point where you're, you know, you're re where you, you can actually recreate your relationship, which yep. is what we did. Um, but really ask yourself, you know, would I regret not going all in on this relationship? Mm. Would I regret not like fully giving all of my heart, giving all of my love and seeing what this could be? Yeah. And, and I think you know the answer, that, that it would be. And if you wouldn't regret it, then that's, that's okay. That's your yeah. journey and we're not here to work with you. But if you feel like, yes, I would regret that. I've got more to give. Yeah. I've got more to share with my partner and, and I wanna make this relationship the best it can be, then you are our people and mm -hmm. we would love to help you. Yeah. And so if you just click below, there's, there's a few links where you can find out how you can work with us, but we just want you to know that if you're in survival right now, this is not the end. You, this is not the end, you haven't failed, you're not broken, you're not being punished, it's actually the beginning. Mm. So when everything starts to end as it is, you're actually rebuilding the new. Yeah. It feels like it's falling apart and we 
seriously get that because like that story I shared to you, I literally felt like the world was swallowing me whole. Mm -hmm. Like I was so alone and everything was falling apart. Yeah. But I d couldn't see how it was all actually falling together in a way that I never could have never could have imagined because yeah. I had never seen that. I didn't know that would be possible. Mm. So we really hope that this inspires you and you yes. realize if it's possible for us, it's possible for you and um, and we'd love to support you. So check out the links below, below and we'll see you in the next video. Yeah.